Haigus. Hello and welcome to my channel Haley Marie Vintage. Today I'm super excited. I have a Gunny Sacks pattern, a genuine non-reprint original Gunny Sacks pattern. This one's from 1982 and this is what we're going to be doing today. I am now transitioning into my fall and Halloween sewing. So I'm calling this six weeks of spooky sewing where I am going to be doing a different autumn or Halloween themed item each week. So I think we're alternating, I think, between Halloween and autumn themed, and then some are both. Spooky's here to join us to be part of spooky season, except for she just left. Rude. So we are gonna be working, this is Simplicity 5828. This has two different lengths. There's the shorter and the longer. I think I'm gonna make this shorter. And it has mutton leg sleeves that I really like and I'm interested in trying. And if I don't like them, I have enough fabric that I can swap them out for the shorter sleeves if I decide that that is not what I want. Let's talk fabric next. I'm really excited about this fabric. So we have a lot of this fabric. I have 10 yards of this fabric. I'll put a little close-up strip right here. Has some pheasants, maybe a quail, some mushrooms, some acorns. I thought it had squirrels on it for some reason, but there is no squirrel to be found on it. And it also has little mushrooms. So I really like this fabric. Admittedly, the colors aren't my favorite, but I love the print. So I'm gonna go ahead and make this up into this dress. And then my plan for trim is to use, I got this velvet ribbon trim. This asks for a uh, single fold bias tape with lace. And so I'm just gonna kind of skip that step and use this. This ribbon has lace on each side. It's brown in the middle. It works essentially like a single fold bias. I think what I'm feeling so unsure of about this dress is the colors. I am not a huge brown, yellow, whatever. So this is super out of my comfort zone, but I love the print of this fabric. And this is fabric, I guess I'll hold it up again, that I picked up in South Carolina when I went to the dress factory about a year ago. So it's true authentic 70s vintage. So this is like really fun to work with and I only need five-ish yards. So I only need about half. So my bet is I'll be selling the other half at the end of this. It's really beautiful. It has that really beautiful vintage print. So I am really excited, but yeah, this is definitely out of my comfort zone. And the last alteration I'm gonna make this is buttons up the front. I don't want buttons up the front. I want lacing up the front. So I'm just gonna sub that out for lacing. Easy peasy. I've done that a bajillion times. So I'm not too worried about that. That uh, is basically it. So let's go ahead and jump into cutting. Cutting out this pattern felt like a very, very, very long journey. And in a way it was because this took me about two hours and most of the time cutting a pattern, it takes me about one hour. Nothing really to note on this pattern. I again was following the layout pretty closely because I wanted to use my fabric efficiently because I knew I was going to have some leftover and I wanted to leave as much leftover as possible. Basically, I decided to go for a full pattern weight method on this one because all these pieces except for the sleeve fit on my 24 by 36 cutting mat. So the sleeve was the biggest piece of this pattern which is just always interesting because most of the time it's skirt pieces. So having it be the sleeve piece was kind of fun. This just took forever so you're just going to see it cut to different shots. I did only cut four ruffles during this part of the video because I miscounted or got confused or whatever. So I did have to cut that fifth panel on the third day of this project. Whoops, it happens, but I was not particularly happy about it because as you guys know, I hate cutting. So having to take cutting further into other days was a bummer. I also did need to interface the collar. So I cut a piece of interfacing in the collar off camera as well. No spooky today. She left me alone and was napping. So that was nice, but sorry for you because that means you don't get as much spooky in your life. But yeah, I, I finally got this cut out. So we will go ahead and move on into my day one check-in. Good morning. So I know I'm looking a little bit unhinged. I have half my hair in curlers because they didn't dry overnight. And then I'm wearing a corset because I'm seasoning it over like a basic house dress. So we're starting it a little chaotic here. And in the theme of chaos, it is almost 11 o'clock. <laughs> and I was gonna start sewing at nine. So we're doing really well. I have kind of a busier weekend than I wanted. And I was gonna sew yesterday because I got a surprise day off from work, but then I didn't. I decided I needed a rest. We now have two days. I would really like to finish this by about three-ish tomorrow because I'm going out to my friend's farm and I really wanna take the reveal footage there. However, we'll see. Today, the goal is to get the bodice 
and some of the skirt done, I think, uh, in hopes of hopefully achieving that goal. Today, I do have to be over at a friend's house at five to meet their cats. I'm very excited. So my goal is to just basically, so from now until five, with a little lunch break, I have some leftover Chipotle I'll eat. So yeah, that's kind of the scoop for today. Overall, this looks like a pretty straightforward make. I think I should be able to get it done on time. There's like little complexities to each thing, but like nothing crazy. I think Spooky's gonna come say hi. Come on. Yeah, you are gonna say hi. Say hi to your fans. They're not even here for me. They're here for you. Yeah. She has said hello. And so now that that has happened, we are gonna go and sew. So Spooky was playing like a wild child while I was reading my pattern for the morning. And of course she stopped the second I turned my camera on her, which is always so frustrating. I'm just curious, do other people's cats stop playing wildly when they start recording? Or is it just mine? It is kind of a darker morning out, so the lighting is gonna be a little bit weird. But here I am getting everything pinned. In retrospect, pinning this was definitely not the right move, but sometimes you just don't know until you start sewing. Here I am folding on the solid line, and then you're supposed to stitch on the dotted line. I did not mark these even enough, and I definitely paid for it later, which you'll see. And here I am doing the sewing. I did one round of sewing with pins and one round of sewing without pins and the round without worked significantly better. I, on the marking, I don't know what happens, but I don't think I marked these evenly at all. These pin tucks like aren't spaced evenly and I don't think it's on the pattern. I think it's on me and maybe pinning did work better because one side definitely turned out significantly better than the other and I guess I would have to do a lot of thinking to figure out which it is. So maybe pinning was worth it because I think it was the pinned side that looked significantly better. I should have honestly unpicked and redone these, which I did have to unpick and redo one. When I started my first one on the other piece, I did it inside out so I had to completely unpick that seam and then re-stitch it. Another thing I find very satisfying when ironing is pin tucks because they go from these like ridges to something very flat and pretty. With this, I feel like you can kind of see how uneven my pin tucks are. You can see kind of how curvy and weird it is. And in some cases, the pin tucks kind of end up so close on top of each other that you can't see them individually. So that was definitely a whoops on my part. And like I said, I should have definitely just unpicked and redone these, but I didn't want to. I was feeling lazy. And so these are the final pin tucks we end up with. And sorry for the poor focus here, but here I am basting on the lace that is going to serve as where I put my cord to tie it up in a corset function. Instead of using the buttons that this pattern calls for, as you guys know, I love a lace up corset detail. And so if I am doing anything gunny sex related, that's what I'm doing. So I am setting the precedence for this here. So here I am just going ahead and basting my lace down at five eighths inches with it poking in because once I turn it, it will flip back out. And then after I had that done, I real quick put in the princess seam. So these are seams that cut across the bust and make it so you don't need any darts. I much prefer these to doing darts. However, they're still not that easy because you have to get everything eased in so it doesn't look warped and weird. Here I am finishing the edges of the facing that will go in the bodice. I'm just doing this by folding it over about a quarter of an inch and top stitching that down. This is just a neat, nice finish so you don't have any weird raw edges unnecessarily and not having raw edges is kind of the point of a facing. So the assembly for this was actually really interesting because here they have me pinning the collar to the facing and then the collar to the outside and then eventually I'll sew them together. Usually you just sew the collar flip it inside out and seam it into the neckline and then you have your facing go over that. So this is a way that they don't ha then have to have a full facing go all the way around, I guess. It was just interesting and I thought worth noting. So that is what I'm doing here is I am pinning the collar to the facing and the collar to the actual bodice. And then here I'm actually pressing the collar. The pressing for this was key. The diagram was pretty intense about it because basically where the facing is gonna cover, you're gonna press open to have less bulk, but when where there is no facing, you're gonna press up so you can just hand stitch that down and not have any raw edges showing. This was just pretty tricky ironing, but I did the best that I could because I knew it was really important here. So here you can see I'm clipping up at the shoulder seam. Past the shoulder seam is where it'll be the collar with no facing, and then in the front it will have the facing. And then here I am filming the 
putting in the facings. This was also interesting because a lot of times you're not going to work with two halves of a bodice completely separate, but in this case for this pattern you did. So I literally just had like halves of a bodice floating around. The other thing to note here, I am going to be stitching from where I can see the basting stitches for the lace. It's really important that I sew right on top of where the basting for the lace is because when I basted this lace on, I basted it so it would perfectly be sticking out. So it's really important that I follow these. And here you can see what these look like now. They still haven't had me sew the side seams, so it is just the two fronts stuck together. Uh, you can see where the corsetry is gonna happen. The pressing was very satisfying here. And everything's looking really nice and as it should besides my wonky pin tucks. The next thing to figure out was the trim. I didn't like the double lace side, so I actually cut off one of the sides of the lace on this trim. So it'd be velvet ribbon and then lace. And then I am just stitching that down onto the decorative part where it goes. This, basically, I just sewed down each side of the ribbon to make this happen. Again, sorry for the weird focus. I don't know what my camera was doing. Here I am just doing, running those two lines of stitching down the ribbon. I have sewn and turned the ties off camera, but we do have them ready to go. So the way they had these, which is also interesting, is they actually had me pin it to the back panel. And then of course I'm gonna pin the side. So it doesn't matter, it's still between the side and the back, but typically I've experienced these patterns having you pin it to the front side. I don't know, just something different and interesting to know. To allow the sleeve to get so tight at the wrist, it has me sew these little tiny dart looking things that you then cut so it gives you a split at the wrist. That way you can take them on and off but still get that tight wrist look. While cutting this, I all of a sudden realized I forgot to do something that I then went and did in the most awkward manner possible. I forgot to finish my edges on that little piece of fabric that is on the sleeve slit. So here I am finishing that awkwardly, obviously, ideally. Normally you would do this before you sewed it to the sleeve, but I didn't and I still wanted that edge to be finished, so here I am. And now that I have actually finished the seam, I am finally ready to get it all pressed and figured out. It is really always kind of a struggle for me to figure out exactly how far into the dart I need to cut for it to lay nice and smooth. One last snip and I got this laying exactly the way I wanted. After this, it, the next part was to put the trim around the wrist. It was interesting, another difference again from this this from maybe earlier patterns is often you would put the trim on after you had sewed up the side of the sleeve but here they have me putting it on before and then matching them when I sew up the sleeve so I don't know I just find things like that interesting so I thought I'd share with you and I had mentioned this briefly but I decided I actually only wanted the lace on one side of the ribbon I thought it just gave it a little bit of a cleaner and less busy look so here I am cutting that and then here I am actually sewing that down. I did not pin it before. However, I also made a questionable choice. I was trying to follow a TikTok tutorial on how to turn this corner really tight and I just ended up with something kind of weird. You try things and you learn and sometimes they don't work. And here I am stitching along the edge first and then I'm going in and stitching on the inner part of the ribbon that is closer to the lace. I just felt like it would work better because I knew I would have to ease in that second row of stitches and I thought it would look better eased in where the lace is. And then just to show you how narrow the sleeve gets, you can see this with my sleeve sausage roll in it. And I am just pressing this open and flat. I've also run gathering stitches throughout this and boy, are we about to gather. This sleeve had a massive amount of fluff in it, which of course I knew, but it's one thing to like know it in your head before you work on a project and it's another to actually see how dense the gathering is. Because the gathering is so dense, I am trying to find where my markings match up and my hair keeps blocking you. Apologies for that. But I am just basically easing in the sleeve exactly to match the marks already there. Because this is a later pattern, there's a lot more room in the sleeves. So I'm able to actually use my sleeve pull off thing that then makes it sleeve size so you can get your sleeve fully rotating around it. A lot of times my 50s and 40s patterns, these are not as big and so it's just a little bit harder and I have to work a little bit more with like a flat method. But here this worked really, really well. And then one of the last steps of the night is the most satisfying and it is cutting out all of those basting stitches I used to gather the sleeve head. 
I've started to do these as I go when I sew instead of all at the end because it's just less tedious if you do it as you sew. And then the other thing to note, you can see those blue markings on the pin tucks there. So what I'm gonna do before I go to bed is I'm gonna dunk both halves of the bodice so that way that ink will just disappear. This is a pen that disappears once it is wet. And I've just found that dunking for things like this are just sometimes easier than trying to like target spray bottle because there are such long lines and really, really dark little dots. Good morning. I kind of said that in my spooky voice. We're at 8 a.m. today because I really, really, really want to finish this and I feel still pretty far away from finishing it. I made myself get out of bed on a Sunday morning and get started. So here's how the day will probably shape up. I'm gonna work on the skirt and then attaching the two and then hopefully I'll be done. Here, one half of the bodice. I have the other half sitting somewhere else. They are still a little bit damp because I dunked them last night to get rid of all of the blue markings. Right now, I am not focused on the finer finishes. Eventually, I will need to stitch this down. But since I'm trying to get this done by 2.30 today, we're just doing everything I need to wear it. So yeah, that is kind of the game plan for today. Basically, I just need to assemble a skirt and stick the skirt to the bodice. However, I have a farmer's market I want to get to at 10 because my favorite slash I think the only one in Seattle shave ice vendor is at it and they're only in Seattle proper once a month. I love shave ice, but I'm not willing to drive more than a half hour for it. I'm really excited. I'm feeling like I look really good for the farm today. Uh, eventually I'm gonna like get for real ready, like get some makeup on and actually brush through my hair. I just was enjoying this curly life. I think that's it. So we're gonna go ahead and hop into sewing. So what I am doing here is I am sewing all of the panels of the skirt together. I'm getting the front and the back all sewn together. And then I am also sewing together all the panels of the ruffle. So this is just getting all my individual pieces prepped and ready to sew together. And then as always, I am pinking my seams and then pressing them. Finishing your seams is important for a longer wear piece. And then pressing just makes your piece look so much more professional. I do occasionally see sewers not pressing. I mean, you can do what you wanna do, but things do look significantly better if you press them while they sew. I know standing over a hot iron, ironing is not very fun, but it is really, really necessary. I mean, I enjoy ironing, but I know it's not everybody's cup of tea. So here I am working on putting in the pockets we have yet another way of putting in pockets here it has me sewing in each pocket down the side with a 3 8 inch seam however these pockets go all the way to the top and what will eventually be the gathered part of the skirt once these are sewn in and pressed, I am going to be stitching from one of the dots down to the end of the skirt and then the little two dots up at the top and then down around the pocket like this diagram here shows. This is just a really interesting way to put in a pocket and honestly, I really like these pockets so I think I'll maybe adapt this method for the future. And then here we have gotten the pockets in and I am just finishing and ironing the seams. These pockets get pressed towards the front. I also ran some basting stitches in because I realized I totally forgot to put in those basting stitches earlier as the pattern tells me to. It doesn't really make a difference other than it was definitely have been easier when they were flat and separate pieces as opposed to this whole situation. So I am deviating from what the pattern has me doing here. So the pattern actually has you putting the lace and the ribbon down around the bottom of the skirt ruffle. I actually want it in between the skirt ruffle and the top skirt because it can cover any weird or wonky seams and I just think it looks better like it's just my personal preference. So here I am finishing the bottom of the hem. I'm folding it over a quarter inch, sewing it down and then I'll be folding it over a quarter inch again and sewing that down yet again. I am going to be gathering the top and sewing it together as you would like say a gathered skirt without the weird let's just call it like paper bag technique where you have kind of this fold that's going over i just don't love how that looks i will put a little picture of what i'm talking about here it's not my favorite i would much rather have clean seam there i don't like the way that overlooks i think it's a pain to iron and maintain and it just like opens up the dress to me for like more seam failure so instead i'll just be sewing these directly together which you'll see in just a couple seconds. So here I am gathering these down to match all the different notches that the pattern tells me to. So if I was doing it the way the pattern wanted me to do it, I would actually be 
top stitching these on. However, like I said, I feel very differently about how I want this skirt to look, so I will be pinning them right sides together and then sewing that seam like normal. I do want to note when I do gathering stitches around a ruffle like this that's really wide, I do end my gathering at the edge of every seam. So that way I don't have to like gather it all the way around all these like yards of fabric and just can focus on each panel as I pin it to where it belongs on the bottom of the dress. And I'm slowly getting to the last steps. Here you can see what exactly I'm talking about where I'm deviating from the pattern. I just, I like this covering the gathers. I like it to look cleaner. This is just the way I wanted to do it. And so again, I am starting by sewing the bottom edge of the ribbon, which is the wider part of the skirt, because it will be easier to ease the top in than it is to wish I had more bottom ribbon. So the top will be like a little bit, not like wrinkly or bubbly, that's not how it turned out, but it just, it needs easing because it's still technically a little bit smaller than the bottom circumference that I'm sewing right now. And then here I am putting in the zipper. I'm doing a traditional placket instead of like a half and half. I just find a traditional placket like the 50s way easier to manage. So that's what I'm doing here. However, I will be the first to admit my zippers have gotten really, really, really bad looking because I've gotten really lazy. So next project I'll need to tighten it up, but I don't feel like it for this project. So that is what I'm doing here. I chose this kind of like weird brown zipper because it has like the tan in it that kind of matches some of the print and I know I won't use this zipper for anything else because I kind of think this color is horrid. And now we're to the last step and one of my favorites. I started to lace this up. The lacing up of the corset bodice here just makes everything really feel like it's coming together and it was just... I don't know. This is just always a really fun step for me. I do have some hand sewing to do, but I will do that later. I need this to film at the farm right now. So with that, let's hop into our reveal over on said farm. <laughs> All right, we have shown the reveal. I think this dress turned out absolutely amazing, but let's dig into the numbers of how much it costs to make this dress. So the fabric for this was pretty cheap because I got it on a state sale, even though it was authentic 70s. Fabric was $26, so super cheap. I used five and a half yards, I think. So yeah, super great deal there. And then the notions, the notions were significantly more expensive because this includes the zipper, the thread, like the whole shebang. That is $42.89. The trim was the biggest expense here. And then last was the pattern. The pattern was $44.10. This is a pretty good price for an original gunny sacks pattern, so I'm pretty happy with that. So that brings us to supplies total of $112.99, considering the fact that gunny sacks dresses now go for well over 200. I'm pretty happy with that price because that is the price to me. I think this is a really, really, really good price for a dress with this much detail and so personalized. However, if you were to buy this dress, you would be including labor. This took me 12 hours and 45 minutes to make. This is actually pretty fast considering all the detail in this dress, I think. I've just gotten much faster at applying trim because I'm much more experienced than I was even just a few videos ago. And then I'm going to multiply that 12, essentially 0.75 by $25, 
an hour, which is what seamstresses in Seattle appear to make. And so that brings us to the labor total of $318.75. This is obviously a significant amount more than the cost of the supplies. That brings us to a grand total of $431.74. I actually think that's still a really good price for this dress because of all the detail. Like, would I personally buy a dress for that amount of money? Probably not, but I also sew my own. But I think it's like a really reasonable price considering all the time and effort and detail that went into this dress. You're not gonna find that many dresses that have all this detail. So let's go ahead and jump into the wrap up now. So here is the dress. She is lovely. You can definitely see the 80s influence in this dress since this is not a 70s gunny sacks pattern. I feel like the mutton leg sleeve like just really shows that because the earlier gunny sacks definitely have more delicate sleeves. However, I still really like this. I love the neckline of this. And I really, really love the lace-up detail being with this brown cording. I think I'm gonna use colored cordings more often. I think it just adds a really fun and unique detail to this dress. As far as things that I might perhaps change in the future. I need it to be way more precise with my pin tuck. This side looks really, really great. They're spaced really, really evenly, but this side, they kind of all overlap and jumble and don't look so great. So I would definitely like change that if I was to make this again, which I will, I think, use this pattern again. I really, really like how it looks. And this is just such a fall dress. I feel like I'll probably only be wearing it potentially September through like November-ish, maybe December. That it would be nice to have this dress in kind of more of like a cold spring color per se. I also like, I have some flexibility in the fit of this. It is still a little bit loose if I don't have it tied in the back. And so I always think that's a benefit. I have worn this now to the office. I've actually worn this, I think two different days. And I'm really, really happy with how it fits. It's really quite comfortable. I did hear stitches rip in one of the arms when I raised my arm suddenly in the office but I can't find where the actual stitches broke so it might be some sort of basting or structure stitch that broke because I can't like I can't find a tear in this and I keep looking for one the other thing I guess it could have been is something with the sleeve because I have like three layers of stitching in the sleeves to keep them nice and secure I don't quite know what happened here so aside from that no other fit issues I got lots of compliments at the office my boss said I looked like I was Thanksgiving, which I thought was really funny because when I'm filming this, it's still August. So what I will say, this dress, not appropriate for an 80 degree day. And this was way too hot for me to wear the other day. However, I think it'll be absolutely perfect in fall. And I felt like it was a good tester because my office is so cold and I wasn't too cold all day in the office wearing this. So I guess that's a perk. I, I really like how the trim on this came out. The way I was able to cut off one side of the lace. I don't know, I just, I feel like this trim really worked. I wasn't sure if the brown would make it feel too like heavy or drab and I don't think it does. I actually think it makes it richer. So I'm really happy with that decision that I was so unsure about. That pretty much wraps up this project. I hope you enjoyed the first installment of six weeks of spooky sewing. I'm going to be sewing six fall and Halloween projects in a row on this channel once a week. Uh, so stay tuned for those and definitely subscribe and stick around. And then just a reminder that I do have a Kofi if you wanna go over and buy me a coffee. I always appreciate it as you can see from my time breakdowns and my money breakdowns. I spend a lot of time and money on this channel and so it always really makes my day when somebody buys me a coffee. Other than that you can help me the usual ways by liking this video, commenting down below, sharing with a friend, all that jazz. And with that I will see you next time. Bye!